John, why do you have that stick in your hand? There's a hole. <laughs> because we're getting ready to play this, this theme song, aren't we? Yeah. I'm young getting prepared. Well, something needs to happen first. Oh. There's a farm <laughs> down the street. I thought we were going to da- jam with Dale J. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Chris Brake. That's John Rapp. This is the Chris Brake Show. That one up. <laughs> now I'm going backwards. <laughs> that was exciting, John. That was a good little jam. We're getting good at that. Those little eight bars or whatever. <laughs> I kind of screwed up a little there. I started. I, I I switched to the wrong note at the wrong time. After I did the, when I was supposed to go to the, I went to the. It just sounds freestyle. Yeah, but then ended up going backwards. The theme song ended up going backwards. Like. That sounds. That sounds weird. Maybe that's a new song. Yeah, that's a new song. <laughs> We'll just, right. play, we'll just play it backwards, John. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, this is Chris Brake Show. Chris Brake, it's John Rapp. It is a rainy night in Indianapolis, Indiana tonight, although it's nice weather. We have a star coming on. We have a celebrity. Big star. Big star. Big star. I'm nervous, John. It's raining outside. I just got scattered notes. You know what? That rainy day makes you scattered. It's like, what am I doing today? I don't know. Drank a little too much last night. Oh, that adds to it for sure. Yeah. Megan's not here. Megan's not here. That adds to something. Yeah. <laughs> now, John, how do we do this show? I always forget this part. Do we tell the people who the guest is now, or do we wait till she's on the phone? Well, it's a, is there's there's two different camps of theories. So you, if they don't call, then you don't want, you know, we don't want to tell them if she's not going to call, but we're pretty sure that she's going to call. Sometimes you're not sure if, you know, Coolio's going to call. He happened to call, you know, right on. That was cool. Coolio, hey, do you make sure you have your screen pulled up so we don't miss it? Yeah, yeah. All right. See, we're working it's, together here, people. <laughs> working here we got five minutes before the big star is supposed to call we're not going to tell you who she is until she calls oh i didn't know we oh, made oh we, ha- yeah, we haven't decided yet what should we do um i wish megan was here <laughs> even though megan doesn't even know the star yeah yeah <laughs> her voice is missed but i'm you know we, i'm not gonna do a megan voice sorry uh, we have the star of american horror story jessica link no we don't have jessica <laughs> Uh, who do we have? We have Naomi Grossman. 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 I like her. You may know her as Pepper. Pepper. Yeah. She, John, you've never watched the show. I have not seen the show, but I've you know seen some pictures of her. She looks pretty cool. And Megan's never seen either. Like I, I'm I surprised. Know, I know pretty much everybody I know watches that show except for the people you two, the ones in this room. <laughs> so you watch it. Oh, yeah. Nice. You've been keeping up? Who doesn't? I guess me and Megan are the only ones. Well, it's over. Oh, it's season's over? Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm interested in it now. Now I'd like to see it. There's so many shows on, you know? How do you have time to watch them all? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they invented the DVR. Yeah, this is a good thing. <clears throat> I'm obsessed with that Better Call Saul. Maybe not obsessed, but I would say that it's probably the only show that I watch uh, when it's actually on. You know, like other shows, you know, I'll DVR them. But this one, I watch it live. I have to. Now, see, does that mess you up? Like, because it nine o'clock or something, is it seven, eight, nine o'clock? Like, people, like, you know, people are up and bustling around. I, I always, if I have a show like that, that's why I like to DVR it because it's like I want to close my door and turn everybody away so I can pay attention to this. I don't like watching them like at eight because, you know, people are walking around and making noise. Well, you're, you're in luck then, John. Why is that? The show is at 10 p.m. Nice. And. If that's not good for you, which it's not for me, they played it again at 11. That's really cool. So I watch 11. 
But then if that's not even good for you, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they play it again at uh, 2 a.m. Wow. Yeah. Triple dose of salt. It's pretty convenient. Are they mixing the... Because I've, I've seen the first couple episodes. I haven't been keeping up, but I like it. Are they mixing Breaking Bad in there with it, or is it it's totally new thing? Uh, it's pretty much totally new things. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, you're, you're seeing this guy just trying so hard to be a good, honest lawyer. <laughs> you know? You just, that's, he's just, he tries so hard, and you're just you're waiting for that moment when he cracks, you know, and how he slowly <laughs> falls into becoming the, the Saul Goodman that we know. Because he's not even Saul. You know, he's Jimmy McGill. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I do like that show for sure. Um. Man, I really man, I wanted to talk to Megan about something. I won't go too into it here, but uh, I joined Tinder. What's Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's I think it's a dating app. Oh, how do you spell it? T i n d e r. Okay, <laughs> but most people when they hear the word Tinder or, mm. or Grinder, <laughs> that's why I asked. Grinder's the Grindr? one. Grinder. <laughs> yeah, Tinder's the heterosexual <laughs> one, and Grinder's the homosexual. I one. I don't know if I would join a dating site called Grinder. <laughs> well, you'd have to be a gay man. Maybe that's why I guess. But that sounds rough. So, Grinder and uh, and uh, what's the other one? Tinder. Tinder, yeah. She's she's probably gonna call right now. So I'm not good. That cut, that I'm means I don't have to explain all this. <laughs> I'm staring. I'm, I'm I'm burning a hole in in the corner of the screen where, uh, where Tinder is gonna be calling. Basically, all it is is it's an app and it shows you people that are nearby and it shows you pictures of them. Normally, when people hear Tinder, they think that you know it's you know it's got a reputation reputation for being a uh, just a hookup thing, mm. you know, where you just meet somebody and have sex with them. But that's not necessarily what it is. You know, you'll even see people in their bio that's like, I'm not here to hook up. I don't hook up. So don't, <laughs> don't send me your penis picture. <laughs> but it's strange because what happens is you just, you know, you set it to like one mile radius or a 20 mile radius. And you just. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. And all it shows you is somebody's picture. Hmm. And if you like how they look, you swipe right. <laughs> if you don't, you swipe left. <laughs> wow. And then they do the same thing. For you. Yeah. And if you guys both swipe each other. Then it says, hey, you got a match, and then you can talk to him. Oh, man. So have you met anybody on there? You got like heartburn or something. I do, too. I do, too. I had it today, and I have it now. I don't like heartburn. I ate uh, macaroni and cheese that I don't eat because now I'm the diet, and now it's got me all like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. Um, would you ask me? Um, have you I met been... anybody on it? I finally got a match. See, here's the thing. Nice. Here's what I wanted to talk to Megan about. Well, first of all, I think I probably have more matches but I didn't know how to use it when I set it up, so I was using it without even having a profile picture or a profile. So, <laughs> like, so, so you got a match with no picture? No, no, no. Okay. no. I, I added a picture. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to. But see, but what I was doing, though, is I was I was doing it just really, uh, like, what? Hmm. I can't explain how I was doing it, because it's really superficial. Right, yeah, sounds so like So I'm it. just going through just just swiping on tens you know tens mm -hmm. tens and eights you know <laughs> are, are there a lot of tens and eights around here by your standards yeah nice. although although i don't think that they would you know they're probably just on there for the same reason that i essentially joined it was just for uh just to make myself feel good just for you know like what's not, not gratification but yeah what's what's the word to let yourself know that you're loved or that people you know yeah like let, let you know i don't know what the word is but let you know that people assurance. think that you self-assured like Sometimes yeah, they tell you you look good. Yeah, it's really the only reason why I joined you, it. You wanted to know you didn't look like a freak. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not a freak show. <laughs> so that's good. Well, so you, you now you know, right? You got. But here's some, the funny some, thing, though. Yeah. Because at first I had it set for like eighteen to fifty-five. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm swiping, you know, lots of older ladies too, and ladies my age and stuff. You know, hey, nice. you look good. I'll swipe you. You know. <laughs> But then I then I set. I'll the, swipe you. That just the, sounds. <laughs> then I set the filter like eighteen to twenty. <laughs> oh man, that's a that's, <laughs> kind of young. That's bottom barrel illegal. <laughs> that's kind of young. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just started swiping them all, and wouldn't you know, John? What the only match I got was a twenty-year-old girl. Hey, it, it works, <laughs> I guess. That's the type of thing you'd be picking her up, huh? You'd be picking her up, you know, because she probably didn't have a car if she's eighteen or whatever. That's that's still pretty young, you know. No, she has to have a car, but no, she'd have to pick me up. Why? Huh? Why would she have to pick you up? 
Oh, because I put that on my profile. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> so you you kind of just uh you just haggardified your uh, your profile. You just made it sound like you. <laughs> it's the most honest Tinder profile nice. I've ever seen. It nice. says Chris thirty, no car. Hygiene is debatable. <laughs> <laughs> nice Chris 30 no car hygiene is debatable chain smoker <laughs> semi-alcoholic no money <laughs> nice guy debatable is that a question mark yeah. nice guy debatable <laughs> honest guy 99% of the time so which 1% are you lying about in there <laughs> 6 feet tall 220 pounds <laughs> is that the part <laughs> It doesn't ask for any of that, but <laughs> that's really funny, Chris. That's, I, I commend you for doing that. It's like I, I was worried about it, but I was like, you know what? I'm just, I, I don't, you <laughs> Why know, not, right? you better want me for me. Right. You, you know, know what? You're, that's a very smart thing to do because most people they put on there, they try to dress it up and stuff. And then, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, they figure out you're not that guy. Yeah. So I put on there exactly what type of guy I am. I think that's very smart. And you got a mask with it, right? I did. But that's strictly on photograph. No, they can see the profile. Not there. Hey, wow. Al, we got a phone call. All right, let's answer it. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I've wanted to do that for a while, so God bless you for doing that. You wanted to do what? Well, you did set up a, a terrible profile. <laughs> you know, no job, don't want one. <laughs> you were on the air. Hello? Hi, it's Naomi. Hello, Naomi Grossman, star of American Horror Story. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we are on the air. Hold on. Cool. Before we even start this interview, do you have a Tinder account? Is that a dating thing? Yeah, I just signed up for one. Oh, how's it going? I got one match. Woo! <laughs> but I put the... Uh, I do believe uh, there are several gay men using the pic face of Pepper on that. <laughs> Uh, so there are people using my likeness, uh, or at least a highly modified likeness, uh, to get dates. I don't know how it's working out, but uh, I don't actually personally have one. No. Wait, are you are you serious? Would that work? Completely. <laughs> and how 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 did you come to find that out? Because uh, I have friends who've been matched with my character. <laughs> <laughs> so people are attracted to that character apparently i mean it's a little weird but it just shows that they have a big heart or maybe it's, they can see past a whole lot maybe it's some sort of new uh code for like underground gay culture you know ah, it's possible <laughs> it's a meme <laughs> i'm counting on you to find out I don't. I don't think that popped up. We did a bunch of uh, Google auto searches on you to see what we get, mm -hmm. and I don't think that. I don't think anything about gay men popped up. So. Oh, really? Uh, that's surprising, actually. <laughs> I'm a bit of an icon, <laughs> or so I found. <laughs> that's crazy. How do you feel being an icon? Oh, oh, I no, I don't say that in like a. <laughs> uh, a, like pat myself on the back kind of way. I just know. Uh, oh, there's an echo. Uh -oh. um, no, I just, I can tell my demographic when I <laughs> walk, walk into a crowd, it's the teenage girls and the gay men that know who I am. Mm -hmm. How? Yeah, I wonder, how is that? Because you're pretty famous now, at least, you know, on the show, uh, but you're not, it's not your face. So how does it feel like being a you know <laughs> a great character on a show, but then maybe not getting that celebrity recognition on the street? Um, uh, it's nice. I mean, um, I mean, in a way, it's uh, it's kind of cool. I get the best of both worlds. Like I can still go to the grocery store without any makeup on and not have to worry about like paparazzi or anything, but. Um, you know, it makes it especially special when people do recognize me. And actually, you'd be really surprised. There are super fans out there everywhere. <laughs> so. Well, you do. I mean, it's weird how they, how they, yeah, what the way they put that makeup on you, you know, because if they would have put it on somebody else, it wouldn't have quite the same look. And I, mean, I know you probably contort your face. Oh, completely. I have, like, the pepper face right here in my living room. I'm looking at it. And... <laughs> 
I could put it on anyone. It it doesn't it it you know, it looks totally different on, on whomever. Whomever oh, you, you put it on. Oh, you actually have it? You can put it on people? Well, there's <laughs> I mean, we re- never recycled, um, sadly, as green as we like to be. Uh you know, every day I worked I had a new prosthetic piece or set of them. Uh but um yeah, I took one home. Why not? You know? <laughs> for all time sake. <laughs> I'm sure they can't really do anything with it. Like I said, you can't recycle them. And uh, uh that's gonna um, be worth some serious money. Yeah. That's probably true. I never even thought about that. I mean Yeah right granted, my career is worth more. <laughs> like I would much rather, you know, have another season on the show than uh, whatever I could get on eBay for it. But, um, are yeah, you, you know. Are you going back next I season? Kid. I can't answer that. Oh. Wait, hey, what's, the, <laughs> what's the theme next season? Uh, hotels. 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 Nice. Are you making that up? <laughs> no. I can't believe you didn't know that. You haven't done your homework. No, I haven't. Honestly, I listened to you on a different podcast uh, last night. and uh, Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, I learned more information there, not about you necessarily, but about uh, just the show. Like, I did not know that Jessica Lang is not coming back. I think that's what they said. Yeah. I did not yeah, know that. The I word. Did, yeah. So, no, I, you're, you're right. I did not do any homework at all. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see how this goes. I heard no, about I heard about Lady Gaga as well on that podcast. Yeah, I think that's going to be awesome. Well, it, what about Lady Gaga? She's coming on the show. Yeah. See, yeah. Jo- see, John it, doesn't it, watch. It. <laughs> you see, John did even less homework than I did. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the the straight man. I don't know anything about anything. Wait. So, so next season. Uh, Apparently, Lady Gaga's supposed to be on. How, do you know how many nice. episodes she's on? Is that in an article that I could have read already? I mean, I think she's a series regular, which would make wow. it most. So that's um, huge. It's really big. Is it really? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. I think uh, I think it's going to be great. You know, I mean, they obviously had to do something kind of big to replace Jessica, and I think you know they they succeeded. Oh, a, <laughs> it's about no. as big as it gets. Is it really hotels? <laughs> Oh, come on now, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you think hotels are ripe with uh, uh, fodder? Yeah. I mean, I do. I stay in hotels all the time, and they creep me oh, out. Oh, yeah, there's tons of stories, but, you know. Yeah, especially if it's like maybe the history of one specific hotel. Hotel, though, that's, I'm excited now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I would have looked that up beforehand. <laughs> Um, no problem. What else can I tell you that you don't know? <laughs> tell me about Groundlings. You were in, you went to mm. you, yeah. How long were you there? I was there. Gosh, from like 2001 till about 2006. So about five years. Wow. Who were you? Yeah. Who'd you go they with? They get constant uh, uh, offers to do reality shows, and they always um, turn them down. Because they, like American Horror Story, are very secretive. They're sort of this underground society, and they don't really like for people to talk about it or, or for their secrets to be revealed. Of course, and now you're asking me, <laughs> and well, I'm not there anymore, so technically I could answer. Ooh, what's the secrets? Wait, I'm confused. No, it's the, just... Drown- um, <laughs> Drownlings is real secret, I guess. Huh. No, it is. I mean, in, in a way, <laughs> it's kind of like... I mean, when you think about it, it's kind of like a survivor. Whoa. You know what I mean? Like, you know how survivor, like, there's a bunch of folks on an island, and there's all these, like, alliances and um, and uh, challenges and votes. And honestly, that's groundling. And you got kicked it's off the island. It's also, like, an amazing <laughs> breeding ground for, like, some of the best comedic talent there is yeah i mean their classes are unparalleled i'm sorry uh everywhere else it teaches improv um and uh and the talent that comes out of there is just you know there's it's great but uh but there is obviously bureaucracy and some bs that goes along with it It just it just is so you know, um, I agree. It would be make an amazing um, reality show. I mean, if we're watch, willing to watch like the Biggest Loser and 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 people like run around the con- the world like 
doing idiotic challenges. <laughs> I would love to see, you know, to follow 30 up and coming comedians as they like tear their hearts out on stage every week. Um, unfortunately, you know, they're not going to ever let that happen, but. Yeah, it said, I believe it was your Wikipedia, they said that uh, it had some really unusual sentence that uh, the people at Groundlings distanced themselves from you or cut ties with you, or it had some weird phrasing like that. Oh, really? I believe so. I'll have to look that up. There's a, um, there's no, a beef. I wouldn't go that far at all. <laughs> uh, I, I should probably fix that because <laughs> I understand that Wikipedia is done by like just random strangers and so it's entirely possible that things be completely botched and no there's nothing it was definitely not like that um so you heard it here first very friendly but um basically just like i mentioned like challenges and alliances and votes and all that um i had no idea it was anything like of that. your time in the sunday company which was uh the company i was in uh, they have what they call a vote, and you're either up or out. And so um, of the 14 people in my cast, 10 of us were out, and uh, actually only one went up, and then three got to just stay. So basically, to answer your question, yeah, I was one of the victims of that vote, if you will. I was out. But it, it's not like cutting ties. It's just like, it's kind of like um, sorority rush. And, you know, they fed me some fantastic tea and I had some lovely times there. But, um, you know, at the end of rush, we weren't going to be sorority sisters. So, okay. who was Who was in there with you? Any people um, you know? The only big name that uh, was in my particular cast was Michaela Watkins. People may know her from... Uh, Saturday Night Live. She was she was on for a season. She's also been on the show Benched, um, and or in fact she created Benched. She's also was on that show Trophy Wives. Anyway, she's an actress yeah. and uh, writer, st- creator. You still friends she's with her? Brilliant. Um, there's also some other folks, not maybe not as big a names, but. Um, Dennis Hemphill Jr., he is a, like YouTube sensation, super funny guy. Um, there was a guy, Michael Serrato, who was um, kind of big on the gay network, the Logo Network for a minute. Um, uh, Brian Keith Etheridge, who is a writer on, oh, what's that show? Anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't, know, I don't like, know any of those people. <laughs> taking A and make and taking names in Hollywood. You know, they may not be the Will Ferrells yeah. and whatnot, but you know, it seems it's really hard out there in Hollywood for sure. How come you aren't in uh, more shows? I know you were once you were a cheerleader in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, or was that made up too? No, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, you thing. guys, I don't know. Ask Hollywood. I'll tell you. I, I mean, I went for. A, a long time where I just couldn't get arrested in, in this town. And, um, and I think a lot of that is because when you're, when you're first starting out, they, they tend to sort of delegate you to those like little nurse number four to the left type roles. Like they're never going to offer like a major, you know, starring role to some chick without any credits who's, you know, right out of college. So, um, or if they are, it's like a Zoe de Chanel and she's already famous. You know what I mean? Right. Anyway, the point is I, uh, you know, I just didn't have a whole lot to bring to the table in that regard. Like I didn't have a name or I didn't have a following per se. So, um, yeah, I just, and yet like those like nurse number four to the left type roles, I just, I just can't book. Like I'm, I'm a, big character actress and that's why um you know a role like pepper is completely perfect for me because it's just over the top i can totally occupy this person um you know i'm just i'm not a wallflower and that's what those nurse number four to the left type roles require so, mean they wouldn't. Uh, for the longest time i wasn't getting those parts because i wouldn't i'm not that t- the type um and so i kind of like just went my own way. Like I, I started doing theater. I started like writing and 
performing my own one woman shows and in fact I have a YouTube channel as well which I which is quite prolific if people want to look it up. Um, yeah, what's but, the name of that? You know, so I was just kind of like, man, <laughs> you're not going to cast me Hollywood, I'll cast myself. And that's what I did for a really long time. And, um, you know, occasionally I do like a commercial here or there or whatever, but I, I just, I don't know, I just wasn't getting... What do you, uh, what do you mean I, you said that when you wouldn't do those parts, like you, you were turning down, you know, Nurse on the Left? No, they... I wouldn't get cast. Wow. Like I walk, like literally, okay, I have worked as most people in Hollywood have, or at least aspiring actors, I've been an extra, for example. Like, an extra is a, somebody who just fills space, right? They just sort of, there's nothing against it, but their their job is not to attract attention, quite the opposite. It's to sort of just disappear. Well, I don't disappear. Like, <laughs> I walk into a room and, and like, people turn to right. see me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, again, I don't, I'm not trying to say that to, like, uh, uh, build myself up at all. It's just, it is the way it is. Like, I'm a big personality. I got a shaved head and a big booty and a huge <laughs> mouth and like heads turn. All right. So anyway, the point is I would go out for these roles or, or, um, you know, I, I work as an extra and like literally to this day, cause I've only worked as an extra like a time or two, but there's this one movie called, what's it called? She's All That. Right. And I was an oh, yeah. that movie. <laughs> yeah, really? And you have no idea how many people will tweet me and like, hey, were you in that one? Were you in that scene with Freddie Prince Jr.? It was like a split second. We saw you. And like, <laughs> and it's not even like these are that good of viewers. It's just that. That is how much I stick out. Like you can, even when I'm supposed to be like disappearing into the background, I don't disappear. I'm a big personality and kind of a just a, a large presence, especially for five foot, hundred and ten pounds. So how'd you go go so, from getting the wait, extra roles? Yeah, okay. You're you're five feet tall. <laughs> yeah. That's the same. That's the same height as Danny DeVito. <laughs> and you guys are both <laughs> taller than Megan, right? Yeah, you're both taller than our co-host who's not here. <laughs> Hmm, That's pretty impressive. And you're shorter than Napoleon. <laughs> hmm, how about that? I'm just full of short uh, information. I, I guess. But how'd you go from, so you, you, you're getting extra roles, you don't no, like I it? No, I mean, so... literally, like, for me, extra extra work oh, right, was just right. a way for me to not be waiting tables. Like, it was definitely not a step, stepping to stone into acting. Mm. And that's why, I don't know, I always, I think anyone who is using that as a, a, a stepping stone to acting is completely fooling themselves because i don't think anyone takes extras seriously like in the industry you know that's really good advice yeah i mean i would say for actor you know aspiring actors i'd say act like that would be my advice to them (laughs) like not get close to the action by you know hanging out as an extra or standing or whatever i mean again no one's looking at them as an actual talent they're looking at them as like well, somebody who needs a hundred dollars a day, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And nobody's going to entrust their movie or, or sitcom or, or whatever series on somebody like that. So, so you were able to, support, yeah. did you, were you like, did you have to waitress while you were doing all this other stuff as well? Like when you were trying to become an actress? Yeah, of course. I mean, I waited tables. I, I mean, I've done like every, every crazy job under the sun. Like I've, danced at bar mitzvahs i've uh i've taught spanish at the playboy mansion what? i've driven the red bull truck and crashed it into a, a shopping mall oh. i've uh i mean it's done like every dingling job you can possibly imagine all right tell me about what is it like being a cause what are you like a promotions promotions person for yeah i would totally do that i was that chick at, at the bar who'd be like hey want a bailey's you know a uh, bottle opener <laughs> and it was like oh my god what am i doing with my life <laughs> usually they find really hot girls to do that stuff but occasionally they'll like just get really desperate and they'll find somebody who's just a super extrovert like me and he'll just walk up to to people in bars like with zero provocation 
<laughs> I tried so, to apply for one yeah, of those jobs. Yeah, I did once. all kinds of stuff like that. If now, what were you yeah. doing? What were you doing for Red Bull? Like, and how? Tell, I got I mean, have to hear about thing. this accident. I drove that little Red Bull car. Um, I mean, the fact of the matter is, most of the time, it's it was all actresses. I mean, the fact is, those kinds of jobs are kind of perfect for an aspiring actor because it doesn't tie you up during the day. So if you have any auditions or bookings, you're you're pretty much out of the woods. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's why I did them. Um, and as it turns out, like I made some wonderful friends to this day. Like my Red Red Bull girlfriends are like my, you know, home girls for real. Um, uh, and, so it's funny. Like we would literally just like, we'd be forced to just like hang out together for the day. And then we'd, you know, we'd, like I said, drive into shopping malls or maybe drive to our auditions or drive to our improv class or drive to our, you know, whatever we had going on for the day. That's not technically what they wanted us to be doing. They technically <laughs> wanted us to be, you know, uh, uh, basically spreading the good word of Red Bull. But I figured I needed to spread that word at improv class and uh, at, at my audition for the day, you know. <laughs> Never mind the fact that they already knew about it. <laughs> Red Bull because I'd been there, you know, several other times that week. How did you but, How did you wreck that car? Did you knock the top of the can off? Did you knock the can <laughs> off? The- I had a few accidents actually because I worked for them for like two years. Wow. Um, <laughs> I I had one accident when I like I said I forgot that I had a big can on the top, <laughs> and so I actually like drove it into a parking garage and didn't realize like duh you're at work Naomi. <laughs> um, That's awesome. And then my other accident, <laughs> really shocking. Um, I was on the 101 freeway for people who know LA, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, the top of the car flew off. <laughs> like it was, it was literally like a hard top convertible, and we didn't realize it. And somebody hadn't screwed the top uh, on properly. So all of a sudden, we went from having this nice, quiet conversation to having to, like, scream at each other. And our hair was, like, blowing everywhere. And we're like, what just happened? (laughs) Anyway, it was very exciting. And again, like, how do you explain that to your boss? How do you return a car with, like... (laughs) You pulled a the Tommy boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the stories I have. I just, just How do you not get I fired once, after that? I once um, modeled nude at art classes. Oh, oh okay. That's a, that's a sick yeah. group. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was going to tell you, when we, uh, when we did the auto, the Google auto search, you know, you type your name in and stuff comes up. And obviously yeah. we got Naomi Grossman nude. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you did. I, I didn't see. I didn't see any pictures. <laughs> Wait. Oh no. No, I guess I didn't look hard enough. Oh, you haven't even looked at my website. I don't even know why we're talking you, right now. Wait, you have nude pictures on your website? I yeah, I do. I have two. I'm on it right now. On I don't the see homepage, any. No you don't even have to look uh, for on them. the homepage. There's nude photographs. I'm, I definitely must have missed that. I'm looking at it right now. I because we were watching your video. Ah. Uh, so if you oh, that's, uh, your butt, notice is that there, your, it says Girl Lodge and Fine Landscape. Her butt. That is my butt. That is <laughs> my one of my solo shows. Um, people think it's a porn. It couldn't have been. Couldn't be further. It's a one woman show. It happens to be set in an art gallery, um, and it happens to be. How should I say? Basically, when people ask me if I'm naked in it. My answer to that is metaphorically. So no, it's like it's theater. There's no nudity whatsoever in this play. However, hmm. I am bearing myself, bearing my heart, bearing my soul, bearing everything. So it's um, hence the photo, the photo you see there. The other show, which is also um, quite revealing, you'll notice, uh, Carnival Knowledge. Again, it looks like kind of a burlesque show. Not at all. It's storytelling it's just it's it's a, like a theatrical journey it's kind of like people have watched uh spalding gray or Dama <laughs> or you know yeah. like one woman one man shows that's what this is 
So who's drawing these uh, misleading photos for your for your artwork then? <laughs> no, they're not. You got to get people in the door. <laughs> yeah, right. They're both. Yeah, I mean, Carnival Knowledge is set on a Carnival Midway. Right. Fact is, that's my Carnival outfit. Like, yeah. what can I say? I it's um I gotta get I produce those shows. Those are shows that I um you know I, that were paid for with my own meager Spanish teaching budget at the time. So, um, you know, I got to make my money back. And, and if that means slapping my little booty on the front, then I'm happy to no, do that. That's, that is not a little booty. You're right. <laughs> Looking good on there. Okay, my big, juicy booty. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so they, uh, did you already say, because I remember reading the dev, they were performing that in, uh, in Scotland? Yes, I took it to Scotland, yes. Oh, so you um, took it. Okay, I thought somebody else was doing it. No, it's my story. <laughs> it's me, 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 me. So, well, you don't have to play yourself every time. That's a little selfish, isn't it? <laughs> yes. You got to give those new actresses a chance. No way. It's my story. <laughs> Nobody gets to tell my story. <laughs> they what? look pretty cool, man. Why Scotland? Yeah, no. People can, um, I encourage people because honestly, this is the work of which I'm most proud. Like, I love the people have, you know, obviously resonated with Pepper and, you know, whatever. That's awesome. But if people really want to know me, like if you want to go for dinner with me and we'd like sit there and go, so tell me about yourself, I would actually probably tell you the stories of Carnival Knowledge and or Girl in Argentine Landscape. Like that's me, you know? Yeah. So yeah, if people want to know about me, like that's the best way. Now are these, like can we watch these or is this only live? Yeah, you can on uh, YouTube. The full... You can go on um, and look up either, and you'll see snippets. And then, of course, you know, I appear at a lot of, like, horror conventions and stuff like that, and I always have those on hand because I love it when people want those. Like, you know, like okay, I said, so... it's much more meaningful to me than some 8 by 10 glossy of pepper. So if, uh, you know, if people ever see me somewhere at one of these things, I'm happy to, to give them one. Okay, so you do have the full show recorded. Where it I can, do, it can I be do. Purchased. I can't just give it away on no. YouTube, you know. Well, but if, I do have if it. If you don't, somebody else will. <laughs> you know, that's the story of YouTube. That well, no, you got yours not if control. I keep total rights, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, why I'm really careful about how I let it out. What's the most common question they ask you at the horror conventions? Um, there's three. How how long was your makeup? <laughs> is Evan Peters really cute? And are you going to be in season five? Damn it! So I we so got, we, we got one out of three. We got one. We we avoided the other two. Not bad. Uh, how I long, know. How long is it? Let me guess. Four hours. No. Uh, two, two and a half to three. Two to three. Wow. Well, we're on Eastern time, yep. so it still takes as long on the East Coast. <laughs> what? <laughs> Although I've never actually had my makeup done there, so I don't know. We shot um, Asylum in Los Angeles and uh, a free show in Louisiana. So I can really only speak to Pacific and uh, Central Time Zones, but I feel pretty certain it's not going to go any faster on the East Coast. What are you thinking about Indiana right now? That's a good question. (laughs) I don't know. I don't entirely. I'm not following 100%. Like, I try to stay kind of. Uh, at least on social media, I'm kind of apolitical, but um, I, I mean, I'm a bleeding heart liberal, so I, I, it doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good. Yeah, thank you for not canceling our show. Did you know we were in Indiana? <laughs> I didn't. Are you? Um... <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Hello? Did she hang up? <laughs> no, I didn't. Are, are you, um, are you, what was I going to say? Uh, we're in Indianapolis. I, Wait, I didn't realize that Indiana was uh, East Coast, though. No, we're on Eastern I mean, Time. Eastern Time, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. They call it the gotcha, Midwest. Gotcha. No, it's we're we're the far. I understand. We're right in the middle there. Yeah, I you, went to college at Northwestern in Chicago. Oh, I just want to say for, I used to live in the West Suburbs in Chicago. <laughs> oh, interesting. Not you know, really. I'm going to be in that area uh, yeah. supposedly, unless I don't know, unless they like cancel me. 
um, because of your your state. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to cl- uh, I want to clear it up. We don't all we don't all have weird things like that. And honestly, I don't know any business owner that would turn away a homosexual owner, a homosexual person for anything. I don't know a person to do that. So. <laughs> I just, yeah, it feels bad to have everyone be like, oh, Indiana, people, I see headlines like, we hate Indiana. I don't like it that much either, but, you know, we live here. It's not, we're not all bad. So just I love to Indiana. Let you know, no, I love Indiana. You know. I love Indiana. And it's, it pisses me off that all these people are, are canceling. Yeah. You know, like, it was a Wilco and then a Nick Offerman. Man, and that's, that's so. Like, that's like, we need you guys. Yeah. You know, like, you, <laughs> you're the culture. You're, like, staying away is not, is not the solution. <laughs> right, right. You know? Like, that's not well, how I was help. sort of hoping that things would, uh, you know, pass themselves up and or, you know, whatever this legislation was, it'd be like banned by the time I come in like two weeks. But yeah, I'm going to be in Evansville, oh. Indiana, supposedly. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing there? Yeah, I'll be there for a horror convention. Mm. You can pick up a carnival knowledge and... And grow an Argentine landscape there. Um, let's see. I'll tell you right now. I'll be there on April 17th and 18th. Do you know the name of it? April 17th and 18th. Yeah, it's called... Sea Pepper Live. Topicon. Well, I'm sorry, what? T-I-C-O-N. Topicon. Topicon. Clever. Topicon. Why is that clever? I don't yeah. get it. Top, topical con convention topic. No, it's like pop. Like, oh, oh. pop culture. <laughs> I'm still confused. <laughs> oh, it's not pop pop icon because we had a pop con. Pop icon. Oh, pop, oh. Maybe it's pop icon. Oh. oh. Sorry, I'm a pinhead. I don't know. I'm glad we all worked that out together. Otherwise, we'd all all three of us be walking around sounding like idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. Anyway, I'll be there. So come, come see me. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, we'll come ask huh. you about what your about makeup. What about your and... listeners? Where where do they live? Or are we just having a conversation for just ourselves? They're, oh no, they're, they're they're straight out of Indianapolis, and you know, no, all they're, over. Yeah, they're all over the place. All they're Some people cool. Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. We got a lot of uh, UK. A lot of listeners in the UK. Filipinos. Yeah. So who else is coming to that convention? <laughs> Any idea? You know, I don't know. I have no idea. Didn't do your research there. Really? Do any other? Do any of your other cast members when you go to conventions with you? Like, do you guys ever travel of in packs? Nice. Who are the we ones? Do. Uh, we're all going to be, uh, a bunch of us are going to be at Chiller in New Jersey this month, and then a bunch of us are going to be at Spooky Empire in Orlando next month. Um, so yeah, obviously it's harder to get all of us together, but uh, we do. It's fun, you know. Uh, it's that way we kill two birds we can uh meet fans and make some money and 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 hang out you know we're like a family how much is it for your autograph um it depends on the market uh but 25 (laughs) to 30 25 to 30 Uh, that's that's so weird i I would probably do it i probably would do it not pay for it but i mean charge people if like it's it's so weird to me that that's the norm because who would have thought that that's the way those conventions would work i don't know it is weird yeah I it is kind of weird. It is. I mean, the fact is, um, when you go to these things, like that's just what people are charging. So, oh, yeah. if I were to charge for less, if I were to, you know, give it away for fifteen or ten or twenty, like it just makes the other people that are asking forty or fifty, like it makes them look crazy. You know, I mean, I don't know. Norman, Norman Reedus charges like a hundred. Wow, yeah, I think that's that's like what Shatner charges too, up there, hundred, hundred fifty. Yeah. So when you're looking at people like that, like you know, Stan Lee and, and those guys, you know, like I said, they they can only get away with that kind of thing if uh, if we charge, a, you know, yeah, they a certain don't amount. They don't need that money, <laughs> but you you need that money. Yeah. You need that money. They don't need that money. Shatner doesn't need that money. <laughs> no, he definitely doesn't. But it's it's because of that it's that he can charge that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, are you friendly? Like, are you friendly to these people? Because I always hear Shatner's a dick. <laughs> I have never met him. I really like him, so I I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, I, I love. Yeah. True. Has been is one of the greatest albums ever made. 
It's pretty good. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> you have not heard how it's been by uh, William Shatner. Go check it out. Yeah, William Shatner has made, somehow produced one of the best albums of the last 10 years. Henry Henry Rollins is on it? I don't know how he did it. <laughs> uh, hold on. Cool. What was, hold on, what was, what was I going to ask next? William Shatner's uh, autograph. Okay. Covered William Shatner. Uh, how many people searched for Naomi Grossman nude on Google last month? Your best guess. Oh, I have no idea, but you can find out. Can't we find out like somehow next week? Oh, I have no. I have like, the answer. Once this podcast comes out. No, I have the answer. We we did some oh, you ser- do? We yeah did some real research. Yeah, we just yeah we did some research. We just wanted you to guess how many people do you think searched Wait, for Naomi Grossman? When nude? did you do your research? Because you hadn't even looked up my website before we talked. <laughs> well, you know, we sometimes we miss a few things here and there, but we do we try to do our research. We've been playing well, this for a week. I, we, we, I saw your website. I just didn't notice that the the nudity because you kind of have to scroll. You just down. missed the naked I'm, women I'm, on I'm, it. You have to scroll down. <laughs> I didn't. I thought. Down. I didn't think. I didn't think it was you. I didn't think that'd be you. <laughs> All right. I'm not buying any of this. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I printed it out. You got me. Okay. I have it. I have it hanging on the wall. Yeah. All right. How many people do you think searched for Naomi Grossman nude last month? Wait. So you really do have an answer on this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I mean. I, I uh, uh, sixty three. Ooh, that was a good guess. Uh, Fairly close. Really? No, <laughs> not at all. You way out of the- <laughs> it was. It was five hundred and ninety. Nice. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> that's those Wait. people who. And, that's and people. how do you know this? <laughs> on, on top on top of that, one hundred and ten people searched for Naomi Grossman naked. Oh, different. So difference. yeah, so oh. that's five six. That's seven hundred. Seven hundred people. Those are the people that come out to the oh. Comic Cons. <laughs> yeah. You got put- I'm just so confused. Like how do you how do you find this out? It's a it's a really it's like uh, John will tell you but it's not going to I don't know how he does it. Google it's- Google uh, lets you know if you go in they have a search tool that shows you uh, search volumes and stuff like that. It's really easy to get to but weird if you don't know about it. That is really interesting. Yeah, we'll, wow. s- we'll send you the whole list. Look, what, are you, what are you talking about? You don't have you don't have somebody on payroll that, that covers all this for you? They shouldn't be able to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm just barely uh, able to quit my Red Bull job. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, a- no, but there is no one, uh, no one on who, no one whose job that is. At least not that I employ. Yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, we've we've got more if you want to hear. Them. Well, how many? Okay. Sure. What else you got? Well, how many people do you think search for Naomi Grossman feet? Ew. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to know. Okay. It's. I hope it's, it's less than people want to see me naked. It's. It was zero. If that makes you sleep better. Good. <laughs> yeah. This is a good way to st- to judge stalkers and whatnot. Yeah. Well, I actually at one point um I did I when I was doing those plays, uh somebody actually contacted me and he was like, "Hi, I'm from, you know, Feet Weekly or whatever." And uh we were wondering, uh we'd like to get some comps to your show and are um are you barefoot at all in the play? <laughs> and again, gross. I'm such a whore. I want press. You know what I mean? I want butt in feet. Again, I'm like metaphorically. Um, so I, uh, he came, he came and he sat in like the front row and then he left at intermission because I was wearing shoes. Oh, yeah, man. That's a false advertising. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, you Look. are such a creep. <laughs> yeah, no, right. but I have fully learned my lesson. Like, I have been on red carpets without a pedicure <laughs> and then boom, the next morning there's like close up pictures of my like nasty talons. Is this on your um, website too? It's, yeah, it's so gross. So now I'm like, you know, you you got to worry about all of that stuff. Yeah, now hold, yeah. So wait, I got to ask this because I didn't think they would even do this. But you, when because you're talking about your feet and your talons, uh, but your hands in American Horror Story, like they they actually put makeup or like gloves on your hands. Yes, those are prosthetic arms that were made. Um, arms, for like just like you said, gloves. Well, yeah. I mean, they would they would stop at my elbow, so they were like long gloves. Oh. Wow. But they were like skin, you know what I mean? Like they 
they were fitted for my arm. So you probably couldn't wear them. Are they like is, is that, how comfortable is that stuff on a scale of one to ten? I mean, comfortable. It's not like a pair of jammies, <laughs> you know. But it's not like it's, I I don't know. Like on a really hot, muggy uh, day in the Louisiana swamp, not Ugh. very comfortable. Ugh. Like really hot, actually. Aww. But uh, you know. You sound, you, sound like you're, you sound like you're suffering. The tone in your voice there. No, but I mean, it's part of the That's job, horrible. you that, know? That so is bad, if, man. Uh, if, if some prosthetic arms, uh, you know, if that's part of it, then I'm... Now, then do, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Do they, all right. Do they pay you more for that because of your discomfort? No. Those bastards. <laughs> I mean, you, there are... Uh, there are, um, uh, you know, there are bumps. Like when you shave your head, usually you can negotiate a little more, which I did. Uh. Um, but uh, now shaving head, yeah, you know. shaving your head—that's another you know, weird fetish. People looking up online, people shaving their heads. Oh, we have uh, 10 people searched for a head shave of actress. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Check like, out those head fetishes, I guess. 20 people na- searched for Naomi Grossman, her head bald. <laughs> <laughs> Who types that That's into so Google? weird. <laughs> it really is. It really is. That's a weird one. People are weird. <laughs> her head bald. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And uh, what, what do we got here? Seven, <laughs> 70 people searched for how tall is Naomi Grossman. We got the answer to that one. Yeah, listen to the show. <laughs> uh, 110 Five people. Five feet of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and a big booty to boot. Okay, 110 <laughs> people searched for Naomi Grossman. Microcephaly. Is that how you pronounce that? Mm-hmm. Microcephaly. That's the disease that Pepper mm. suffers from. Mm-hmm. So do you think when they type that in, they're trying to find out if you really have that? Right. Do you? No. <laughs> what is is that the same thing that like Beetlejuice has? Lester yes, Green. Yes, I mean it's a it's a neurological disorder. It basically means a tiny head. You'd know if I had it, like pepper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. They, we didn't ask this Google. You know, we're, it's we're, we're, very <laughs> rare. Like in fact, when they were first designing the character, they were like. How are we going to do this? Should we use CGI to, like, shrink her head on screen? (laughs) And then they ended up deciding to build up my body. So they ended up putting me in a big fat suit. And it makes my head look even smaller, like, because my little body is so big. Wow. Like, I'm actually much smaller than... Man, they did. Pepper, what? They did such a good job that I was I was thrown for a loop. See, that's probably why people search that, because, I mean, they, they do use real, you know, people with, you know... I, yeah, sure. I don't want to use the word freaks, you know. <laughs> right. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that gentleman, I they used to call him freaks. I just want to put that out there. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah. They used to call him freaks, they used I to, think. But don't anymore. I don't know. Do you, is freak an acceptable term? <laughs> like a freak show? I mean, I think in this context, it's totally fine. Right. I mean, in general, living in Indiana, like you, like Mike, hey. careful. Hey. Hey. But we are talking about the show. I mean, just today, I was on the phone with uh, Matt Fraser, who plays, uh, you know, Paul, the illustrated seal, who has little slippers for hands, and mm. I referred to him as a freak. But I refer to myself as a freak because I was right. one of the freaks, you know. So again, I think it all depends on uh, context. You ever wear that that a uh, pepper suit out in public? <laughs> No, only one time actually. I uh, they dressed me up for one of these horror conventions mm. called Monster Monsterpalooza in Burbank, and they did me up on a stage, and then like they did my makeup that is, and then I they unleashed me into the crowd, and I was like wreaking havoc on the whole crowd, and then afterwards, um, it was ha- happened to be Halloween, and I asked the um, makeup artists who were happened to be having a Halloween party that night if I could wear the costume, because let's face it, I'm never going to get a better costume than, than that. <laughs> right. And they're like, yeah, sure, fine. So I only had a few hours to kill in the costume, but I did. I, I drove around in my little hot pink convertible, <laughs> freaking everybody <laughs> out, as you can imagine. 
Because <laughs> I'm sure they recognize the character, right? It's like there's a there's Pepper well, driving. Well, actually, the... no. <laughs> really? The show had only aired once. Uh, this that really was in very out. early October of you know it was in October of 2012. So yeah, if people happen to have watched American Horror Story that one one Wednesday, then they saw it. <laughs> but for the most part, people had no idea what the hell that was. All right, I got two but more. But it was very entertaining for me because, you know, I garner a lot of attention as it is in, in driving, like, a hot pink smart car. <laughs> but imagine... uh uh dressing up like that. Imagine, like, Pepper driving. <laughs> Pepper, look behind you in traffic and there's Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. It's a large Marge situation. <laughs> What's that? I said it's a large Marge situation. Pick somebody up. Okay. Right. Um, do you know? Do you know what that means? Large Marge. Uh, do I know what what? John, <laughs> I just want to know. It's from a movie, right? What's the movie? From Pee Wee. Yeah, uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse movie. Are you getting roles now? Because I know we're gonna let you go real quick here. Uh, but I gotta um, ask. Yeah, if... I actually just got an audition as you were as you were talking. That's why I got distracted and quiet because I was reading it. Um. Oh. Yeah, I'm not a new Pee Wee movie, unfortunately, uh, though I did audition. <laughs> really? Yeah, I did. But yes. So it's easier now, now that American Horror Story's taken off? Uh, yes and no. I would say, yeah. I mean, like, I get offers now, which is nice. I used to, you know, have to obviously, like, audition for everything. Now sometimes they'll just come straight to me. Um... And then, uh, what can I say? Um, sorry. Now so you're, I'm so you're turning down, so I'm you're turning down, da- um, you're turning down roles. Is but what you're yeah, telling me. you know, I don't know. It, what's hard is like, you're only as good as your last role. And so like, I have pressure to make sure whatever's next be really awesome, mm-hmm. which you can't all, they can't all be American horror stories, you know? Yeah. Who knows yeah. how, who knows how long the show's going to continue either. What do you think? Forever? Uh, I think it could go for quite a while, yes. <laughs> I mean, Ryan Murphy has said that. He's been on panels, and they said, how many seasons do you think you got in it? And he's like, I'll do it forever. <laughs> wow. I think, um, yeah, no, I mean, the difference is really, like, the reaction when I get into a room, um, you know, with casting and whatnot. Like, once upon a time, they wouldn't even look up, look up from their Blackberries. You know what I mean? Like, mm. they were so, like, jaded and, like, didn't care. Now they're like, oh my God, thank you so much for, you know, driving to the valley mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, this is such a thankless role and yet you came out for it. Thank you. Thank you. Like they want to sit, they want to talk, they want to know how much the makeup, took, you know, how long <laughs> the makeup took and if Seven Peters is cute and then if I'm in season five, you know what I mean? Like, so it's nice. It's nice to have casting be your buddy. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Def- yeah. Yeah. It yeah. would be cool, definitely. That's that's what you're going for, getting roles. That's good business. So you're turning down roles now. Uh yes. Yes and no. Yeah. I'm not gonna Come pick on. and choose and Yeah, for sure. Was there ever a time though when you would say yes to everything? Uh, I don't know. I've now I'll see things that I've done and I was like, Why the hell did I ever <laughs> say yes to that? So it makes me think that maybe, <laughs> maybe I did say yes to everything, but uh, on Sabrina the Teenage know. Witch, were you allowed I've to? I've been at this for a really long time, so it's really hard to say. Like, I don't know, my memory doesn't go back that far. <laughs> <laughs> were you allowed to look Melissa Joan Hart in the eye? What <laughs> on Sabrina the Teenage Witch? <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't I? I don't know. I'm just curious. It's, I'm just these are things that these are things that in Indiana we like to know. There's so, so there's a rumor about it. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I got one last question. Is Evan Peters cute? <laughs> I knew that was coming. Especially being from Indiana and all. I know you want to know these things. Yeah. We're, we're, uh, yes. We're, no, no, no. Indiana's, Indiana's anti-gay. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they're branding us as. <laughs> so is he cute? Um. Yes, he is adorable. Is he adorable or is he cute? Adorable. Both. It's the same. It's synonymous. All right. <laughs> well, now that's, we know. See, that's, I don't know if I'd like that. I would. I would prefer it to be called handsome. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Somebody calling me adorable means you know, like that, a puppy. Yeah. 
I suppose, but they are technically different, you know. I mean, he's he's both, but I <laughs> I get it. Like, I think the uh, again the teenage girls that really are attracted to the show tend to be um, uh, they're more interested in a cute guy than a handsome man. Mm. You know, oh. it just depends on your age group and what your interests are. I'm shocked at how much of my little cousins watch this show. These little girls, you know. Like thirteen? Oh yeah! It's, it's shocking to me because even yep. it because it, sometimes I have to turn it off. It freaks me out. Like when Chloe uh, seven uh, yeah, she got her legs cut off. That it, it freaks me to sh- freaks me the fuck out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Naomi Grossman, thank you so much for your time. Go to Naomi Grossman. Well, you're so Matt. welcome, and um, you'll send me a link so I can share with uh, fans. Correct? Absolutely. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, thanks so much. Good talking to you. All right. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Bye. NaomiGrossman.net. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. I was nervous going into that. I don't know why. I always get that way. And then once it gets going, I, you know, I shake it off. Yeah. Well, there's so many things you want to ask, I guess. I just only have so much time. Plus, she was friendly. Sometimes you get these people that stonewall you. (laughs) Yeah. She was friendly, and she had other crazy stuff. Like, who knew about that Red Bull co- Red Bull car <laughs> crash? You know, that's hilarious. Yeah, I think. <laughs> excuse me, I think we need to end the show. Yeah, it's about that time, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty good. Naomi Grossman dot net for the. Uh, I can't man. For the plays, get the plays. Yeah, the, the one co- woman plays girl in Argentine landscape carnival knowledge. One woman play. That's that's intense, isn't it? One woman shows. See, I'm glad she has those on DVD because I in Indiana we don't we don't get to enjoy those, you right? Know, yeah, ne- never we, see them. Yeah, nobody comes. Like, I, you know how bad I wanted to see a Bronx Tale live. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted to see that so bad, and I don't know if it's recorded. I'm never going to get to see that. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. I would like to thank you and Darren Snyder, Indian Tune, Frank at Radio Fubar, John G at 405, Dor Arg at NotYourRoleModel.wordpress.com. Uh, Mary Liz with Rumsey at meandrime.wordpress.com. Rich Barker from Punk Rock Night at the Melody Inn, where every Saturday night is Punk Rock Night. John, do you got any of this? I do, actually. Do, do, do. I'm going to take the mic off. Ron at Radio Max ah. Music. Jeremy. Oh, your hand holding the mic over there. <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> at Cow's Potato. Mark at the Tangent Bound Network. J- J- Jack at the Mix FM. Suma Peter coming at you at Loudtown Online Radio out of Africa. Arvin at Rant Radio Network. I think we need to speed this up. Tom at Talk Stream Live. Mike at our Internet Radio Network. Toby at Radio Blitz. Lamar Soundman at United Sounds Choice. Tico at FJS Radio. Peter at Coda Kofi Broadcasting UK. And Big Nate on the air at Cover Charge Radio. Wow, we did that too fast. A little no. bit too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Megan's supposed to be back next week, right? Yeah. Nice. Thanks for listening, guys. Bum, 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 bum.
and it seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight still shining bright through the sycamores for me. The new moon hastens all its fragrance from the fields I used to roam When I dream about when the I dream moonlight about on the Wabash Then I long for my India